So it could be possible that we are going to get an entity in Dragon Ball Daima that is a rival potentially to the angels, a character that has roots in Dragon Ball's many canons of history and one that is above even demon gods, never mind demon kings. Dragon Ball Daima is fast approaching, it is upon us and whilst we've had free trailers and speckles of information in information in jump sources, we don't know a massive deal about Daima other than the fact that Goku and the gang get turned into kids. Goku and Shin at least are going to the demon world, Vegeta and Piccolo are going to be somewhat main characters. Whether they go to the demon world or not remains to be seen. And there are a bunch of new characters, including this one. Now, I'm not trying to be edgy or breaking news here because I believe everyone thought the same damn thing when they first saw this character. He looks very, very, very familiar. And what also is a correlation to that character he looks very familiar with are they have origins in the demon realm. Now, if you've been a Dragon Ball fan for a long time and are one of the elder statesmen of the Dragon Ball fandom, you will remember the Dragon Ball Dark Age. I'm talking from the conclusion of Dragon Ball GT leading up to the Dragon Ball Renaissance, which really started with Battle of Gods, which ultimately was the catalyst for Dragon Ball Super. But during that time, the internet isn't as advanced as what it was. Most people are on message boards, like things like Konzenshu and as well as other websites on message boards, putting out their theories, talking about ways that Dragon Ball continue beyond Z. And a lot of people always refer to the Demon Realm. Now the Demon Realm does have its origins in original Dragon Ball. You do hear of it, especially in the anime. There's the filler episodes where Goku goes into a gateway to the Demon Realm. But ultimately, it's never really been truly revisited in Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z. And the only thing we really hear about it in Dragon Ball Z is when Dabra, the Demon King, comes to Earth with Bobbidi. So a lot of people were really speculating on how the next threat could come from the demon realm. Now Dragon Ball Super did go into a different type of dimension or introduced a different dimension that was the angel realm and the gods of destructions and then the Zeno's realm potentially quite a lot of other extensions of dimensions upon what we already had in the universal structure but in the Daizenshu and Super Exciting guys it's clearly pointed out the mechanics of how the demon realm operates in relation to the mortal realm and the other world. However, one series that did take the demon world vastly into account was the likes of Super Dragon Ball Heroes, which Toyo Toro had a big hand in. The demon realm has been thoroughly explained in that, and obviously the Dragon Ball games as well, particularly Xenoverse, where the character we've just been talking about that looks very familiar was Mira adaptation of Mira. Now this shouldn't surprise anyone actually because obviously with Dragon Ball Super whilst we do get a whole host of new characters there have been times where Toriyama has simply took a suggestion from the Dragon Room or any of the people in the higher ups of the Dragon Ball creational process and ultimately rebranded that character and done the character in his own way. Broly is one of them. Glorio and Mira look very familiar. Now it might not be that Glorio is a adaptation of Mira. It could be a relation to Mira. We never know Mira can be brought in later. But Mira is from the games world really. I guess you could say the Bandaiverse or section of the Dragon Ball wide franchise and predominantly features in Heroes and Xenoverse. However, whilst he may be getting his own adaptation, I believe there's other characters that might be getting their own adaptation and there are characters in the Demon Realm that are far, far, far above even Mira. In fact, there are beings, entities, that literally can grant other demon kings greater power and he can create demon gods. That is the Dark King Mechicabra. Now Mechicabra did appear in Heroes and whilst I'm proposing that Dark King Mechicabra could be introduced into the Dragon Ball Daima, it wouldn't surprise me if he gets a different name. But I believe it's perfectly plausible and possible that Toriyama has looked at Super Dragon Ball Heroes and thought, well, these are actually good concepts and ideas. Now, most of you know my thoughts on Heroes. I think it's trash. However, I will give it one compliment. The ideas in Heroes, well, not all of them, but most of them, are actually quite good ideas and concepts. And if they were actually mapped out and told in a conductive and meaningful way, then it actually could be a really good story. Even though I'm not talking about this particular character in this particular occasion, a character that I thought was a great concept and idea was Hart. I believe that his motive in the series was fun and intriguing and the power he was trying to attain to achieve that motive was fun to watch as well. Of course, 
Hortz isn't really a part of the demon realm, but Mechicabra, who is potentially more powerful, is. Now, one thing that's happened with Dragon Ball Super is they're struggling to create villains now that are going to be at God of Destruction level, if not beyond. And one way around this is really delving into the demon realm, because naturally when you think of demons, you think of angels. What was introduced in Dragon Ball Super? The angel realm. Now we're going to the demon realm, and maybe there's going to be a way that these two realms are going to collide, like in the biblical stories, etc. However, there's one big problem with the demon realm, and that is, of course, what was presented to us in the Boo arc, which obviously, in terms of the Dragon Ball timeline, is very long ago. Demon King Dabra was almost presented to us as the strongest entity in the Demon Realm, even though we do know about the Mekayo Shin, which are talked about in the Daizen Show as well. And I'll get onto those in just a moment because Mechikabra is a Mekayo Shin, allegedly. But the way Demon King Dabra was presented and the power level that he was at, he was basically at Super Saiyan 2 Gohan levels in the Boo Saga, which has been vastly surpassed now. Now, obviously, there's a timeline issue of where Daima fits into the canon timeline, and even if it is actually attached to Dragon Ball Super, that is unknown. I suspect that it will be, and I believe that it could still potentially be put at the end of Super Hero. But regardless, we do see that Shin and Kabido are split from their Patara fusion, which indicates that it happens after Battle of Gods at least unless they have their own inverse explanation or new method of how they actually get split up. Maybe the wish from the demons actually do split them up themselves. Still a lot up in the air, there's still a lot of theorizing. However, what they need to now give us is the exposition of how a demon can get to the level of a God of Destruction angel level threat. If it is to be at the end of Dragon Ball Super, or even if it's in the midst of the Dragon Ball Super story in between some other arc, they need to have a villain come from the demon realm that is eventually going to be a threat to either the Gods of Destructions or the Angels. We know the Supreme Guys, the Gods of Creations, aren't that kind of threat in terms of raw power or combat ability. Whilst they are prominent with magic, and obviously this story was initially called Dragon Ball Magic, and I think magic will feature heavily, and I think that's the type of skills that Goku, Vegeta, and Piccolo will eventually learn during this process. In fact, even if this story happens post Dragon Ball Z's Boo Saga, the Demon Realm's going to have to get a lot stronger to compete with a Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Obviously, he may not be able to use that form as a child, but, you know, he's going to find a way back to it, of course. Ultimately, they've got to power the Demon Realm up. Now, I have heard theories that it will be a war between who becomes the next Demon King and Goku gets involved. I believe that's very plausible. I at least believe that will be the first part of the story and it will serve as an exposition to a greater story later down the road. And that down the road will include beings that are somewhat on par with Gods of Destruction's angels. After all, even in the Dragon Ball Super story, Goku, Vegeta, Frieza, Gohan, they're close to Beerus now. It's unlikely Black Freezer will be the predominant antagonist going forward in Dragon Ball Super. There will likely be a being further beyond him even, because I believe Freezer will become that shade of grey character that Vegeta really once was back in Z. And they really need to come up with a concept that is somewhat acceptable for the audience to accept that this character could be a God of Destruction, if not Angel level, especially given Beerus is one of the strongest Gods of Destructions and is potentially more powerful than an angel trainee like Mayrus. But well, the framework to create a demon that could be at that level is already in place in Heroes, and that is the Machikabra story of the Dark King, an old Supreme Kai that's been trapped for a long time and ultimately gets re-released and wishes for youthfulness and eventually becomes so powerful that it takes a fusion to compete with him, as well as the use of a magical weapon, a magical weapon I guess you could say which fits the mold of Dragon Ball Magic. Now I do believe they'll start off with a war between the Demon Kings, but Demon Kings let's face it are Dragon Ball Z level, however the framework of the Demon story in Dragon Ball Heroes goes on with Mechikabra having the ability to create Demon Gods, which you could then say are going to be at high tier Dragon Ball Super levels, maybe even at Gods of Destruction levels of power, then you've got that level of threat and then eventually you get the one that created them that's even more powerful and that could be Mechikabra. Now there's other characters that could fit in there somehow like Demigra and Fu. And guys, I'm really going to put the caveat out there. This may sound ridiculous, but don't forget Toriyama in Dragon Ball Super Superhero has just put out the possibility of Android 21 actually coming into existence by making wife Vomi canon to the story. We know in Dragon Ball Fighters she eventually became Android 21. A really cool concept and character, if written well, could be a very welcome addition to the mainstream Dragon Ball verse. Like I said, all these heroes characters have interesting concepts behind them. If they're written well, 
it would be very welcome additions. I know we do want new characters, but these in themselves are very different to what we've gotten in, in Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super. So there's no reason why somebody like Mechikavara, under a new guise, under a new name, would be brought into the Dragon Ball Super story, and it would fit alongside him fitting at the angel level of power. As the Dark King, he would be beyond the demon gods who, like I said, could be at god of destruction levels of power, and he would be the true ruler of the demon realm that maybe clashes with the angel realm. But ultimately, and the really important point is, you have to create the exposition for this story to take place. We barely know that much about the demon realm other than things that we might know from tidbits in the guides and maybe even Sandland. Ultimately, that may be the reason why Goku, Vegeta and Piccolo have been turned into kids again because they need to then go and compete and maybe rise up the levels of power till they get back to where they once were in order to compete with these demon kings and let that story be told then eventually get to demon god level and maybe they'll be back in their adult forms at that point and then the ultimate threat this is what one piece does really well it creates lots of new beings and has multiple threats out in the world at one time that's what dragon ball super does not do well so i offer that toriyama may have picked up on this and may have left the keys to this type of kingdom therefore Iyoku and Toyo Taro to create a grander story. Ultimately it's a light versus dark story, an angels versus demon story, but it's going to be grander, a lot larger and hopefully incorporates all of the cast in some meaningful way. Of course in the trailer we do see what seems to be a Makayo Shin, even though we don't truly see his face. This could be the adaptation of Mechikabra taking place or maybe this is a new Makayo Shin who brings back Mechikabra after witnessing events on Earth as we see him and what appears to be a potential demon king or a demon god for that matter we don't know yet actually watching what happened on Earth in the Boo Saga and getting frustrated with events and how things are panning out but ultimately this is a story that can bring the tension back to Dragon Ball that has been severely lacking in Dragon Ball Super because they introduced this hierarchy of gods and angels and then of course the Omni Kings that really took away the dramatic tension in the demon realm, what we do know, as stated in the Dragon Ball Super manga, that if a demon kills you, you're dead. You cannot be brought back to life. Even though there may be Dragon Balls in the demon realm, by the looks of it, those blue Dragon Balls, they may be able to bring you back to life. But anything in the mortal realm, I don't think, and even the angels can't bring somebody that's been killed by a demon back to life. That brings attention back immediately. The Mai Kaioshin, of course, are going to be very prominent with magic. As we saw the Dai Kaioshin, they could be at that sort of level in terms of their magic beyond Moro level levels of magic that was actually effective against even Ultra Instinct users. And I've seen some people ask, well, why wasn't Zamasu a Mai Kaioshin? Why wasn't he in the Demon Realm? You've got to remember two things about Zamasu. One, he wasn't born evil. And two, to be a Makaioshin, you've got to be an evil Supreme Kai, not an evil Kai. Zamasu was actually a Cardinal Kai, despite looking very Supreme Kai-like, and he was going to be promoted to a Supreme Kai because of his level of strength. But ultimately, he wasn't born from a golden fruit on this on the Kai tree in the supreme world of the Kais. He was actually a lord of worlds, not a lord of lords, but he was being promoted. My Kaijin are actually born evil from a golden fruit. So whoever that character is in the Daima trailer is born evil. Now that doesn't mean all demons are evil, but essentially this character is likely, very likely to have evil intentions. Just to end it, like I said, the skeleton of a structure of a story is there. It's an interesting concept, but it could definitely be told in a much more effective and interesting way than what heroes did it, especially if it's told through a manga. Let me know your thoughts on this down in the comment section. Would you like to see a Mai Kaioshin finally in Dragon Ball Daima? Do you want it to be part of the super canonicity or would you like it to be a story on its own? Could you see Mechi Cabra being brought into the actual story? Drop your thoughts down in the comment section. Do smash a big thumbs up on the video. Lots more Daima content coming. Until next time, Ad Astra.